telecom training. In today's video, we're going to be exploring the science behind one of the most powerful and efficient tools in wireless communication, the parabolic antenna. Parabolic antennas are used in applications like satellite communication, broadcast and telecommunication towers, radio astronomy, and deep space communication. The two most important areas of the parabolic antenna are the focal point and the parabolic reflector, which is commonly known as the dish. With the parabolic dish, signals coming in from the ear are reflected off the dish back to the focal point. Now the focal point is commonly known as the feed horn. Now this is the antenna. And it doesn't matter where on the dish these signals may hit, they are always reflected back to the focal point. Now signals being transmitted are transmitted from the feed horn to the parabolic dish where they are reflected into the ear. Now in this diagram we have a transmitter and the transmitter is sending its signal to the feed horn. The feed horn, as I said before, is the antenna it will send the signal directly to the dish where it would be reflected into the ear. Now there are many reflection points on a satellite dish. For example, a one meter or three foot dish will have about 10,000 reflection points, each contributing to a reflected beam, just like these beams up here. Next you'll see an animation showing exactly how this process works. Here you have high frequency signals in the form of beams being sent from the satellite to the parabolic dish surface where they are reflected to the feed horn. The feed horn would then convert these electromagnetic signals to an electrical signal before forwarding them to the receiver. Signals being sent from the parabolic antenna are first sent from the transmitter to the feed horn where they are converted from an electrical signal to an electromagnetic signal and sent towards the parabolic dish where they are reflected as beams into space. Now in order for any of this to work, the first thing we have to look at is the frequency. Now in this case we're using 4.2 gigahertz. Now as the frequency gets higher, the size dish that you require would get smaller. And as the frequency gets lower, the size dish you would require will be bigger plus the other things that we have to take into account as well. So we're going to be talking about this right now. Now in order to calculate what size dish we would need at a frequency of 4.2 gigahertz, the first thing we have to calculate is the wavelength. Like every frequency would have a different wavelength. So the wavelength for 4.2 gigahertz is what we're going to be calculating right now. So wavelength is equal to speed of light over frequency. The speed of light is 300 million meters per second. That's 300 and six zeros after 300. So I took the six zeros off and multiply 300 by 10 to the six. Uh, under here I have 4.2. That's the 4.2 gigahertz, which is 4.2 billion hertz. That's nine zeros after the two. So I just took the nine zeros off and multiply that by 10 to the nine. So now I divide 300 divided by 4.2, I get 71.43 times 10 to the negative three. How I got 10 to the negative three? I just subtract 10 to the six minus 10 to the nine, and I got 10 to the negative three. So I got 71.43 times 10 to the negative 3, which is equal to 0 0.071 meters. So how I got 0 0.071, I just got rid of the negative 3 by moving my decimal point from right between the 1 and the 4 over 3 places to the left. Because I got 10 to the negative 3, so I move it over 3 places, so I have 0 0.071, which is right here 0 0.071 meters so your wavelength is 0 0.071 meters which is the same as 7.1 centimeters now that you know that the wavelength for the frequency 4.2 gigahertz 
is 7.1 centimeters or 0 0.071 meters. The next step is to calculate the size that we would need. And to do so, we need to use wavelength and beam width in a calculation to calculate the size dish that we will need. However, we haven't talked about beam width as yet. So let me explain exactly what beam width is before we get into the calculation, okay? As we talked about earlier, the signals that are sent out from the feed horn are reflected from the dish and these beams are the signals. A collection of all these beams here is what we call the beam width. The strongest beam width is in the middle. This is 90% of the signal is right here. The other 10% is on the sides. These signals on the sides do not get very far. They are quite weak. So it's the signal in the middle that does all of the work. Now I'm going to use this diagram here to explain the meaning of beam width. Now I have two satellite dishes, dish A and dish B. Now the size of dish A is 21 meters and the size of dish B is 50 meters. Now dish A, you'll notice that I have a beam width of 0 0.5 degrees. What this means is that as these beams go up towards the satellite, they're angled out by 0 0.5 degrees. They're not straight up, they're angled out by 0 0.5 degrees. And for dish B, being a larger dish, you have a smaller angle. Larger dishes always have a smaller angle. So it has a beam width of 0 0.1 degrees. So it doesn't slant outward as much as this, as dish A would be. Now, this may not sound like a big deal at this point, just a little angle. But as these beams continue to go upward, they continue to separate even further and further apart. As you can see over here, they are quite far apart, even further than that side. That is because this side started out wider, four degrees more than that side. So by the time they get to the geostationary satellite, which is 3,500 kilometers above Earth, the signal is very weak because the beam width is now 150 kilometers wide. And it was a small dish to begin with, so the signal that was sent out was not as strong as dish B. Dish B has a much stronger signal, and stronger signals always have a smaller beam width. And because it is a smaller beam width, by the time it got to the satellite, it is only 32 kilometers wide and it is a stronger signal to begin with. So you have a much stronger signal and it's only 32 kilometers wide, which will make it even stronger than this one over here at 150 kilometers wide. And the signal was weaker to begin with. So that's the importance of having a bigger dish. A bigger dish gives you a stronger signal to begin with and it has a smaller beam width so by the time it gets to the satellite you get a much stronger signal so next I'm going to explain to you how you would calculate the size of the dish using the beam width and the wavelength now we're going to calculate the dish dimensions now here we have the frequency of 4.2 gigahertz and we have our wavelength of 0 0.071 meters. So our dish size is equal to 70 times the wavelength over beam width. 70 times 0 0.071 meters over 0 0.5. Now, uh, you know how I got the 0 0.71 meters, got it from there, but how did I get 0 0.5? Now let's go to a chart and I'll show that to you. Now this is the beam width chart and we have all the beam widths in degrees on this side here. We have 0.1 or less and this is for extremely narrow beam widths. Communicate with deep space. Now from 0.1 to 0.5, this is for very narrow beam widths to communicate with the geostationary satellite. 
This is what we were talking about earlier. Under here, we have 0 0.5 to 2, which is for medium range satellite tracking, high gain microwave point to point links. And here we got from 4.2 to 5 for shorter range microwave links, low orbit satellite tracking. And from 5.5 .5 to 10 degrees, we have general purpose microwave links short range radar systems. So we're going to be using here this 0.1 and 0.5 for our purpose. So that is how we got 0.5 for the beam width. Okay, we simply picked it. So we multiply 70 by 0 0.071 meters and divide it by 0 0.5 degrees and we get 10 meters or 33 feet which is the size of our dish. Over here, everything's the same for the equation. The only thing we changed was the 0.1 for the beam width. And that changed the size dish from 10 meters to 50 meters. So we have a much larger dish just by changing the beam width. And this is 50 meters or 164 feet. Now, for large dishes, obviously we're going to have a much more narrow beam width. As we talked about earlier, the angle is not as great because it's only 0 0.1 instead of 0 0.5. So by the time it get to the geostation satellite, it is not as wide. So you have a much stronger signal. Now if for any reason you have a dish and you would like to calculate the beam width of that dish, the equation for that would be beam width equals 70 times wavelength over dish size. So you just interchange the beam width with dish size. This is Trevor from Telecom Training. If this video has been helpful to you and you would like to see more videos like this one, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you'll be joining me in the next video.